According to Jerry Stoll, the late photographer, Bob was a functioning a pioneer as a critic of society. He arrested 39 times. Who's been arrested once? Meaningful, you know, and he, he, he bypassed the, the Gins, Ginsburg Mafia, Ginsburg co Coterie, to get beyond that. He started the situation that others followed and was not, has not been given the, his due, unfortunately. <laughs> he says, I too know what I am not. No, I am not death wishes of sacred rapists singing on candy gallows. No, I am not spore of Creole murderers hiding in crepe paper bayous. No, I am not yells of some assassinated inventor locked in his burning machine. No, I am not forced breathing of Cairo's senile burglar in lead shoes. No, I am not Indian summer fruit of Negro piano tuners with muslin gloves. No, I am not noise of two gun senators in hallowed peppermint hall. No, I am not pot pipe smoke hopes of cynical chiropractors, traffickers in illegal bone. No, I am not pitch blend curse of Indian suicides and bonnets of flaming water. No, I'm not soap powder size of impotent window washers and pants of air. No, I am not kisses of tubercular sun addicts smiling through rayon lips. No, I am not chipped philosopher's tattered ideas sunk in his granite brain. No, I am not cry of amethyst heron winged stone in flight from cambric bullets. No, I am not sting of neurotic bee frustrated in cheesecloth gardens. No, I am not peal of muted bell, clapperless in the faded glory. No, I am not report of silenced guns, helpless in the pacifist hands. No, I am not call of wounded hunter, alone in the forest of bone. No, I am not eyes of the infant owls hatching the roofless night. No, I am not the whistle of Havana hordes with cribs of Cuban death. No, I am not shriek of Bantu children bent under penny whistle whips. No, I am not whisper of the African trees, leafy telephones. No, no, I am not lead belly of the blues escaping from guitar jails. No. I'm not anything that is anything I am not. Being a social critic, Bobby was understanding of the situation that we are always in in the United States. Just heard a program this morning about the possibility of internment, you know, for citizens and uh, this particular poem you know I guess goes right into this situation uh, we're under now we we're talking about walls and you know and, and pits for for human beings to swelter in we already see it in Syria it's it's gaining momentum and uh, you know we are in trouble as a species and human species and Bob was picking that up telepathically. He knew it right in his bones in 1946. So here we are in 20, could be 2076, but the dates go on and the people don't. The neurology has been stunted and, 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 and derailed and, 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 and put in these, these, uh, these incalculable vats of absence. Sullen bakeries of total recall. 
Sometimes I feel the ones who escape the ovens where Germans shall forever cook their spiritual meals are leaning against my eyes. A wounded Margolis in his suit of horror, his eyes at elevated Brownsville, that taste of gas in his smile. I could hear it when my ears were Mexican weed. My first reaction is to be angry with Moses for not committing suicide. My second reaction is to be furious with the Germans for not committing suicide. My third reaction is one of total disappointment for not committing suicide. I think of Chaplin and roll a mental cigarette. I slowly remove my bayonet, write a poem about a poetic poem dedicated to the Aleutian Islands. The bony doorway beyond the burning nose translates me into Hebrew. I know that Foss was actually anti-symbolic and would never have married Kate Smith. And how many Ophelias escaped from Ruth's letter or teenage cancellations out? Here, here's my brain receipt. Take my skin check. I want Juliet on the roof. Because of what happened, sex is holy by virtue of arithmetic and welcome dampness. Someone hurled an eyelid at the moon. My shadow wanders off, lost in black side streets, vulnerable to the cooling, soft switchblade of light blinking. Don't walk, green. My footsteps follow me at a distance. I acknowledge the demands of surrealist realization. I challenge a Polonaire to stagger drunk from his grave and write a poem about the Rosenberg's last days in a housing project. How Salvatore Agron spread his cape for one last snapshot of Jesus speeding through Puerto Rico, his car radio blasting, mowing down the tilting Hiltons speeding to the voltage mass of Sing Sing, the famous Gothic burning ghats on the banks of the sacred Hudson. And yet when I think of those ovens, I turn my head in any other direction. I'm doing my best to dry my mind. The brain's a bully. I go to hospitals named after sadists with diseases that don't exist and demand famous operations that Dr. Schweitzer has, hasn't invented yet. They give me drugs while I wait for Albert to emerge from the jungle. His wise organ music may remove this malingering sensitivity before it infects my other organs. The rabbi across the table from me is also a firm believer in suicide. He wanted to be an actor on Second Avenue and eat dinner across from the theater and be insecure and marry an Adler and talk about Perrette and Alchemin and Secunda and wake up to find himself with an important role in an established theater. He is holy and eats very little and reads like a scholar and wants to kill himself. I refuse to tell him the time. If necessary, I will write the script and we will go together. <laughs> Surrealism, Bob was the the great surrealist par excellence, according to Philip Lamantia. Talked about it quite a bit. And uh, doing poetry for me was incredible journey. And uh, you know, I was looking for, I had a brief conversation with Octavio Paz one day. He was asking me about my conversations with the French writers, but I had to talk about Bob Kaufman because you know I, you know I have to work with my English because as, as a friend of mine once says it, it's just going to have to do. So you know this is um, a poem about poetry that uh, tests the metal of of the young person when he or she is developing uh, 
his or her craft, and uh, it's entitled Apprenticeship. And, uh, and it, works, it works a number on your circulatory system, believe me. And I will uh, use a quote here from Octavio Paz. It's between impulses and repentances, between advances and retreats. It's from his Eagle of Sun work. 48, 49, 49, 50, Broad Marquez and everybody in review that book. But here I am posing in a mirror of scratch paper sonnets. Sonnets as rare as a live Aegean rhino. Absorbing the cracklings of my craft, its riverine volcanoes, its spectacular lightning peninsulas emitting plentiful creosote phantoms from an ironic blizzard of unsettled pleromas. Scouring through years of unrecognized pablums of constant arch rivalry with extinction, bringing up skulls of intensive discourse by the claws in one's mind which seem to burn with a systemic reduction. One then suffers poetic scorching by debris, by inaugural timber which flashes, by friction which flares up and harries, by unrecognized molten's collapsing glass of in initial intuitive neglect. As if one's fangs were fatally stifled by incipients, by verbal range war didactics, by territorial driftwood, by sudden undemonstrative detractions awed by the diverse infernos of Trachel and Dante. One's youngish body stands devoured by reverential print trails, momentarily canceled by the loss of blasphemous nerves and upheaval, stung by demanding neutralities, ravaged by a blank Sumatran solar psychosis, by a tasteless collision of rums in transition, by a conspiracy of obscured fertility by hubris. As one sucks in doubt from a wave of tumbling blister trees, there exist irradiations flecked with a gamble synecdoche, with indeterminate earthenware splinters taking up from aboriginal density a forge of Sumerian verbal signs cooked with a tendency towards starfish hypnosis, towards psychic confrontational drainage, conducting one's frictions in a torrential furnace of osmosis and ire, Yes, apprenticeship means poetry scrawled in unremitting leper's mosaic, cringed in smoky interior cubicles, releasing various deliriums as if pointed under a blackened Oedipal star, with its dark and cal capable tints, with its musical ruse of unspoken belladonna. Poetics, an imaginal flash of Russian chamber lilies stretching under a blue marsupial sun, like kaleidoscopic tumbleweed fugaciously transfixed upon an anomalous totem of glints, upon rainy Buenos Aires transfusions above the urinal coppers of a flaming polar star rise. Of course, kinetic, like magical malachite rivers flowing from moons, blowing through the three-quarter summits of motionless anginas, I've looked only for the tonalities that scorch, which bring to my lips wave after wave of sensitivity by virulence. Yes, a merciless bitter bitterness brewed by a blue-black tornado of verbs in a surge of flashing scorpion chatter, in a desiccated storm of inferential parallels and voltage like scattered igneous winds, coterminous with the bleeding hiatus and resumption of breath, Resolved by flashpoint edicts, by consumptive stellar limes, by curvature intense proto-Bretonian fatigue, mixing magnets, juggling centripetal antipodes and infinities, cracking the smoke of pure repestral magentas. Yes, hatcheries floating through acetylene corruption of practice mental restraint. Two splendiferous vistas mingled with inspirational roulette its mysteriums always leaping like a grainy flash of scorching tarantellas or leaking moonspun allostophas, as if speaking in a regular glossological green Dutch, a frenetic seminar on fabricity, 
a reiteration of hindersyllabic agitation and singing a ferocious vacillation, explosive as random aggregational nodes, mined by a blank consonantal dissection, its maximal priority forked at hypotactic inclusion with isochronous internal procedure with ratios with, phonet, with phonic penetralia by distortion primed by new anomalous nuclear accent by a cadence composing syllables and compounds. Yes, poetics, its force jettisoned by hypotaxis, by paratactic coordination and fire. African dream. In black core of night, it explodes, silver thunder rolling back my brain, bursting copper screens, memory whirls, deep in star-fed beds of time, seducing my soul to diamond fires of night, faint outline, a ship, momentary fright, lifted on waves of color, sunk in pits of light, drum back through time, hump back through mind, drumming, crackling the night, strange forest songs, skin sounds crashing through, no longer strange, incestuous yellow flowers tearing magic from the earth, moon dip rituals led by a scarlet god, caressed by ebony maidens with daylight eyes, purple garments, noses that twitch, singing young girl songs of an ancient love in, in dark sunless places where memories are sealed, burned in eyes of tigers. Suddenly wise, I fight the dream. Green screams enfold by night. I want to be buried in an anonymous crater inside the moon. I want to build miniature golf courses on all the stars. I want to prove that Atlantis was a summer resort for cavemen. I want to prove that Los Angeles is a practical joke played on us by superior beings on a humorous planet. I want to expose heaven as an exclusive sanitarium filled with rich psychopaths who think they can fly. I want to show that the Bible was serialized in a Roman children's magazine. I want to prove that the sun was born when God fell asleep with a lit cigarette tired after all that judging. I want to prove once and for all that I am not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 